Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Jordan Spivey, joined with my dad, Travis Spivey. And in this video, we will be going over chemical reactions and M Science 101. So let's do this. In our video for today, we'll be covering the following key checks for understanding. First, how do chemical reactions obey the laws of conservation of mass and matter? Second, how does activation energy work in chemical reactions? And third, what occurs when enzymes are present or not present in chemical reactions? All of these concepts will be covered in our video today and more, so stay tuned. A chemical reaction is a process that occurs when two or more substances combine to form a new substance. Chemical reactions require changes in the bonds that join atoms and compounds and follow the law of conservation of mass and matter. So let's take a look at these two concepts below, and we'll look at the cell respiration formula. Notice on our reactant side, or on our left side, we have glucose and oxygen, and they come together to form carbon dioxide, water, and energy on the right-hand side or on our product side. But let's go ahead and take a look at our specific elements in our reactants and products. If you notice, we have six carbon on the left and six carbon on the right. And then we have 12 hydrogen on the left, and then we have 12 hydrogen on the right. And then we actually have 18 oxygen on the left, and we also have 18 oxygen on the right. Notice that we have the same amount of elements in our reactants and products, and this is how both of them obey the law of conservation of mass and matter. Energy is either released or absorbed when chemical bonds are broken. Chemical reactions that release energy most often occur on their own or spontaneously. These type of chemical reactions are called exothermic reactions. Chemical reactions that absorb energy will not occur without any energy source. These type of reactions are called endothermic reactions. Now let's take a look at some everyday endothermic and exothermic reactions. And we'll first start off with photosynthesis. And in photosynthesis, we have three reactants. We have six carbon dioxide, plus six H2O, or six water, plus energy input from the sun, which produce the products C6H12O6, which is glucose, plus six oxygen molecules. So if you take a look at this, we have energy input coming in from the sun. And since the energy is going in, this is an endothermic reaction. Then now let's take a look at aerobic respiration. And if we notice, we have C6H12O6, which is glucose once again, plus six oxygen, which produce the products, six carbon dioxide, plus six water molecules, and we have energy output. So this is an exothermic reaction. And you notice we do this every day when we take in food. So the glucose that we take in is coming from the food that we eat, plus the oxygen we breathe in. And then we breathe out carbon dioxide, water, and energy in the form of thermal energy or heat energy. Now let's take a look at activation energy. And this is the energy needed to get a reaction started. And we'll first start off with endothermic reactions. And if you notice the reactants, and if you look at the amount of activation energy that is required, there's a much larger amount of activation energy required to start an endothermic reaction than there is an exothermic reaction. And since there is, endothermic reactions actually absorb energy. So they actually take in heat. So this is just like the process of photosynthesis. It takes in a lot of sunlight heat and it stores that energy. But if we move over here to the right to exothermic reactions, if you notice the, ex the activation energy is actually lower and it actually releases heat. So this is just like the process of cellular respiration. So the activation energy is lower and it releases heat through that process. And that brings us to enzymes, which are special proteins that actually speed up chemical reactions by lowering the amount of activation energy required to start the reaction. Let's take a look at the importance of enzymes affecting on chemical reactions. We'll start off with the chemical reaction without an enzyme. Notice that the amount of activation energy required for the chemical reaction to convert reactants into products takes much longer since there is no enzyme present. Remember, the reason why is that enzymes act as catalysts that speed up chemical reactions. Without the enzyme being present, the chemical reaction is going to take a much longer time to occur, which can lead to bad consequences in the functioning of an organism's body. Now let's take a look at a chemical reaction with an enzyme. Notice that the amount of activation energy required for this chemical reaction to convert reactants into products is much faster since there is an enzyme present. 
Remember, the reason why is that enzymes act as catalysts that speed up chemical reactions by lowering the amount of activation energy required for the reaction to occur. This causes many processes in the body to go much smoother. Now let's explore how enzymes work. First, enzymes provide a place where reactants known as substrates can be brought together to react, which reduces the energy needed for the reaction to occur. Second, the reactants or substrates bind on the active site of an enzyme with induced fit. The enzyme will change its shape slightly to match the substrate like a lock and key. Third, the substrates are converted to products at the active site. And fourth, products are released and the enzyme is ready to bind to other substrates. Notice that the enzyme is not used up in the chemical reaction. Instead, it is recycled so it can be used over and over again so it can convert more substrates into products. There are some factors that affect the functioning of enzymes as well, like temperature, pH, and activators and inhibitors. Most enzymes functions are performed best at 98 degrees Fahrenheit because the enzymes are able to retain their structure at that temperature, allowing it to break down complex molecules more efficiently. If the temperature goes too high, it can cause the enzyme to denature which changes the shape and causes the enzyme to not function properly. Enzymes work slowly at low temperatures too, but this is because the substrate molecules have less energy and move into the active site at a much slower rate. Second, changes in pH may not only affect the shape of an enzyme, but it may also change the shape or change properties of the substrate so that either the substrate cannot bind to the active site or it cannot undergo catalysis. In general, enzymes have an optimum pH level. However, the optimum pH level is not the same for each enzyme. And third, other factors such as enzyme and substrate concentrations can affect enzymes by there being too many substrates and not enough enzymes to conduct chemical reactions. Also, the number of inhibitors present play an important role as well because they actually act to slow down enzyme productivity. I'm Jordan Spivey, joined with my dad, Travis Spivey. If you haven't already, go ahead and like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And also check us out at our website at www.fathersideinterfaces.com. Hope you guys enjoyed the video, and we will see you next time. Peace.